message from God to you. If God thinks it's okay for me, then it's okay for me. I'm going to use God's report. Hallelujah. He says I'm a star and that's what I am. Hallelujah. Are you getting me? You are about to listen to a transformational message by Apostle Aki David of Light Givers Ministries International. Stay tuned and be blessed. We set the base for a greater who recognize it. Amen. Like David says, You have made me a wonder. You have made me a wonder. People are wondering from whence did it come from and where has it reached? This Sunday around 6 a.m. I went to I didn't, now I was born somewhere else, right? But from where I spent age one, I went there. Yes. I walked through the place. Then I went to the next place we stayed. I said something myself, I won't come here again. But as I went there, for the past, this is the third day. I went, you know, they, they took me, when I got to town, they wanted me to go to a hotel. Ah, two hours before the service, hotel. I said, no, no, no. So where they took me to, where the hotel was, interestingly, all you need is a minute walk and you are going to where I was raised. So I said, ah, I'm going. So we left the hotel and we went together. I don't know, was I driving? Maybe he was driving. And then we went there. Ah, the places we were at, they looked like the biggest thing ever. But today I look at it, they were very tiny. I'm even asking myself how we stayed there. There's some great people who knew me. You know, there was a man we went to. He said, ah, you know, when he saw me, the son was like, you don't know David. And the man said, no, I don't remember you. I said, oh, but I know you. I saw a place where we used to put blocks, stand on them to watch TV in somebody's room. Yes. Yes. And the man said, ah, those tiny, those, he said, but you were very short. He said, short, 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 not like that. See, but very intelligent. I, I say it's the one. Then, for the past three days, all I've been telling you is thank you. Amen. Yes. It's called progress. Yeah. No progression. <laughs> Following Bible. For the past three days, it's, I've been thinking about it. Processing, processing. You see, do you know what I want to tell you? They were doing something in the office, so I brought out all my diaries. Glancing through them, memories. You know, I can bring you diaries, where I wrote what you are seeing today. Put them down. What is the biggest secret? The Bible. Yeah, because the word will tell you, no. Everything will say you can't make it. You don't, listen, you don't need, <laughs> you don't need to struggle to hear you can't make it. Everything in this world is telling you you can't make it. The price of cement alone is telling you you can't build. The price of land is telling you you can never own a land. What it costs to preach the gospel alone is telling you you can't preach the gospel. What are we saying? It's simply the word of God. That will tell you that they cannot hear without a preacher. So a preacher must go. A preacher must go. They must receive the message and baptize them. But the word will tell you, oh, what if I go? They don't listen. Preach the gospel. He said it is the power of God unto salvation. You see? It's the Bible. The Bible is so exciting. The Bible is so exciting. I remember times when it looked like nothing will work. You know, the Bible was the only thing I saw. And that's the life I've lived. I have no other life to present to people. That this thing works. The Bible works. Are you hearing me? He said, if you give yourself completely to it, it will show. It's just a matter of time. Seeds are being sown. It is raining. It's just a matter of time. I'm gaining roots. My, my life with Christ is gaining roots. My finances is gaining root. My health is gaining root. Amen. You see, it's gaining root. So you're not seeing anything here. But I'm gaining root. Gaining By the time I come out, nothing you do against me will stand. Amen. I'm gaining roots. I'm gaining yeah. Roots. Last time I told you, have something you are working on at all times. Let your faith be working on something at all times. Build your life on the word. You will not regret it. You will not regret it. Everything in the world is telling you the word doesn't work. Oh no. Build your life on the word. And you will never, ever regret it. Hallelujah. Yeah. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. Someone says, is it possible to be perfect? And nobody is perfect. Perfect in the Bible. Perfect means to be complete. Is it possible to be perfect? The Bible says yes. The Bible says yes in Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. 
He says it is very possible that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. He said, let these four things come from your own Bible to you. Receive this ministry. The ministry of the word brings you something. It brings you doctrine. It brings you reproof. It brings you correction. It brings you instruction. When, it, when correction comes, don't, don't get angry. He said, the Bible you are having, so if you come to a correct church, you are going to find these four things. You will find doctrine, you will find reproof, you will find correction, you will find instruction. Yes. When we come to church, we say, let's all be on our feet. Let's lift our hands and pray. You have been instructed by the Spirit to lift your hands and pray. Right now, you are not sick, but you are sitting down, cross your leg, and you think you are doing somebody a favor by lifting your hands. One day, they will clasp like this on your chest, dust to dust, and it's over. These four things are in church. You find it in church. You find it. Say, allow the Bible to do these four things for you. Some people are waiting to hear from me today. This morning, somebody we've presented the gospel for a long time, probably 2010. We met. We met these ones. Didn't listen. Just a few months back, I was informed that he has received a very big blessing. A big door that has no open for those who have been believing in Jesus. By the time he entered, it is now a big trap. They've been calling me since morning. You know, you know the story. Yeah. I tell you, I tell you, I say, ah, the devil has struck. And this striking of the devil is leading to death. That big door has become a death trap with no reverse gear. Think about it. But they are the first people we preach. They mocked. They laughed at us. We are not happy about their predicament though. But we are saying, why should everything fail? Before you start believing. The word of God is my prophet. Some people come to church. They like the doctrine part. They don't like the instruction part. We see them. We see them. They don't like the instruction part. They don't want to be instructed. Yeah. It's an instruction when we say, we want to take an offering to help. We want to take a collection to help society so in this town. It's an instruction. Last year we were here. We said we wanted to feed people, right? We wanted to clothe people. Bring clothes. Bring this. Bring that. It's an instruction. You can decide, say, I mean, I won't give it. It's not important. Man. Oh, yeah. God will do what he has to do without you. To be involved is an opportunity. What will you feel like to enter heaven one day? And for people to sense the love of God, and that's why they got saved, and it is attributed to your name. Think about it. I learned that very early in life. So in 2007, I had about five shirts. And there was this brother in church who has only one shirt. And he wore this for every service for more than two years. So I bought, I divided. Now he has one, right? I have five. I took two of mine and gave to him. So three, three. We became lifelong friends. By the time I did, now I don't know what happened to that gentleman, but I know he's still in my dad's church till today. Now, a few years later, we are in a ministry. There's this gentleman who wears my size and has two children. You know, out of wedlock, they didn't marry, but decided to get born again, was afraid the church would not receive. We were coaching him, handling him. I don't know all the prophecies I ever gave him in prayer meeting. We prayed together all the time. My message to him was God was going to send him, God was going to send him. Today he's been sent. He took clothes from us for him to remain in Christ. There was nothing to wear. But we're sharing what we had. And the kind of memory he has of me, when he calls the things he sees, ah, I'm waiting to get to heaven. And the Lord says, What? If you didn't hold him for me, he would not be preaching to this number of people for me. Is that not it? If you didn't pay his Lord, he wouldn't be preaching today. Why? Because we're in a very good place learning the word. He's a prophet today. He would have been prophesying doing nonsense. We all know. Some people are selling pants. But when you are brought up by the word, you are not going to tell the ladies in the ministry to bring their panties for prayers. You not discolor the name Jesus. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows what that instruction will do? And we don't want to be instructed. When your pastor comes and say, You will be in the choir. I, I see something in you. You know, some people don't want to be led. Yeah, they don't want to be led. They always take themselves away from anything good. Yeah. Sometimes when I see people older than me, especially, I've learned that for a long time to be patient and wait for them to bring themselves. Because 
Sometimes an appointment in ministry is what takes a member away. Oh, you, by the time you give them responsibility, that's when they leave. Because they're trying to say, I want to come, I want to be a chair warmer. I'll just come warm chair, but I don't want to play any role. So there are people like that. If you want to have a large church and big offerings, you, you allow all of them. Is that not it? You look at me. Hmm. Hallelujah. I think my honesty is my problem here. It's not a problem. It's the fire in my bones. Yes. Hallelujah. Are we here? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Our scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Next verse. Ah. These are our boys. Verse 17, right? That the man of God may be perfect. That's what you say. You say that there's no perfection. Me, I know that I'm not perfect. Me, I cannot be perfect. He said, if you allow the four things to happen for you, you will be perfect. So perfection is God's dream for you. I'm a man of perfection. As I eat the word, I'm being perfected, 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 perfected. That the man of God may be perfect, completely ready, resourced for every good work. It means you are fully packaged for where you are going. I'm on a journey. I'm going to spend four days. And if I'm going to spend four days, I have all the food I need, the tea roll, the water, everything. That is a fully resourced person. What he's carrying will take him there and bring him back. Not the one who's going to say, how will I eat? He's telling you that in this walk of life, in this journey, if you allow the four arms of the word of God to function inside you, you'll be so complete, nothing will strike you down. Jesus said, if you build your life on his word, it will rain. Oh? The winds will blow. He said, you'll be standing. Because you built on the rock. I'm on the rock. You can't fight my finances. I'm on the rock. You can't fight my health. I'm on the rock. My faith is active. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. I'm showing you some things you should be believing. Uh, these are the reason why they say the Bible doesn't work. They don't believe in these things. And when you don't believe, it can't work for you. If I have time, I'll show you some things. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 1 verse 23. Something I showed you the last time. Let's look at it. Those guys must be fast because who knows that what I'm doing here is introduction. <laughs> That's very fast for me. <laughs> being born again not of something that can corrupt that is death corruption is death we are born of something that doesn't die what is that by the word of god which lives and abides forever and i tell you these are the two qualities of the word of god we just saw the four arms we are now seeing the advantages <laughs> we are doing some social studies here some advantages and the two major advantages is that it lives it lives and remains forever. If you build your money on the word of God, it will live forever. If you fed somebody, you see, the word of God doesn't say, carry all the money, hide all. Don't help anybody. That's not the word of God. It's not true. I know you don't like what I just said. But the word of God believes in giving. It believes in helping. It believes in giving. Is that not it? And that's what Jesus said. I know you don't, you, I know some people are not happy about what I'm saying, but no problem. Jesus said something. Jesus said, cast your bread upon the waters. One day you get it. That is forever. He said, don't keep it where, what? Rust will get your coins. Eh? The men's go to close. Then this will happen to it. He said, spread your arms. He said, one day. That is how to give permanence to your money. I believe the Bible. I believe the Bible. I will feed many. I will clothe many. Yes. God is granting me grace. 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 To bless and bless and bless and bless and bless and bless and bless. Yes. These are the things you should be believing. Hallelujah. This is how I pray. Yeah. This is how I pray. I don't pray the prayer. Some people pray. So I don't come out of prayer. You know, some people go to prayer and come out there like this. Prayer has made you worried. Prayer has made one, one arm cannot work. <laughs> when I pray and I come out, I know something is working. Yeah. Colossians 1 verse 27. That I'm showing you a few things to believe in. You know? So we, what chokes it is what? It's not working for some people because of their motive, their aim, right? And then some people because of what they say. Then some people because of what they have not believed. I'll give you some three points already. 
And some of the things they've not believed is this one. Look at it. To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery. He's saying that this is a mystery. He said there is glory in this word alone. Christ in you. He said it is a mystery. Think of, you see, wake up one morning and think about Christ in you. It's different from Christ with me. If your president doesn't go with me, uh-uh. he's not inside. If I lift my leg, he has lifted. So you pour juju on the road. I lifted my leg, I came like this. Christ just stepped on it. What will happen? Neutralization. Yes. He's t- telling you that Christ now, his house is me, David. I'm the house of Christ. If you're looking for the address, he's saying me. So when somebody is praying for a miracle, God is going to send me. God is going to send me. God is going to bring the person to me. This is, this is big. This is big. So can, can, can Christ have opportunities and he's losing them? No, 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 no. Christ in you. No glory can die. Christ in you. He's telling you the address is you. Now think of those of you who find yourself doing things and sometimes you are making too many mistakes. Everything, by the time you just say, ah, why do I keep on making mistakes? That's what you have given your mind to. By the time you lift your mind to Christ in you, that's the end of your mistakes. You have turned on the Christ part so that it will show. What do you think will happen to you? Miracles. Revelation knowledge. Something beyond your mind. We cannot finish reading and studying all the books. But we can act them. Because the wiser than wise lives inside me. Amen. Wisdom is in my heart. When I speak, I speak wisdom. When I act, I act wisely. The one who granted Solomon wisdom is the one living inside me. The one who gave Peter what to say is the one living inside me. The one who gave Paul what to say is the one living inside me. I'm a walking testimony. Christ lives in me. Hallelujah. I say, oh, well, when I do this, it doesn't work, Pastor. Please, when I do this, this is the difference between the one who talks like that. Pastor, please, my business is not shutting up. It will end the day you know that Christ is the one doing this business. It must reflect, it must reflect, it must reflect in your mind that Christ is the one running this thing. It cannot go down. I don't believe our ministry will ever go down. Hallelujah. I don't believe it. Christ is the one running it. Hallelujah. If David was running it, fine. But it's Christ. Hallelujah. Every soul came from him. Not from our, our correct steps, our techniques. Others have done the same technique. They l- didn't last five years. No, 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 no. Christ is in the church. Christ is in me. Christ sits in that car with you. Christ sleeps on that bed with you. Christ, Christ. Can you imagine? Bad dreams cannot come to pass. They will remain bad dreams. But we are spoken words, words into the future. To change things and shape my life. I'm building my life with the word. Are you hearing me? That's how we build. We build and we build. We build and we build. The time for failure is over. No, 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 no. Are we here? Let me try and show you a mystery. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1. Show you a mystery here. To show you something briefly. I'll show you this before I read the scripture to you. Look at this carefully. It says, Wherefore, holy brethren. Someone will say, Please, I'm a sinner. Look at what you are called. What are you called here? Holy, holy brethren. brethren. Brethren is plural for brothers, brothers and sisters. And it's calling you holy. So your holiness is not by your own purity. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. I will not be entangled by bondage. Sin is a bondage. And we are not under the bondage of sin. I'm holy. I'm holy. Yeah. The holiness of Christ is inside me. This is what we do. You see, when I'm coming for a prophetic service, when I'm coming like that, I believe holiness is passing by. Do you know that's what I think? Yeah, that's what I think. So when I'm laying hands on people, holiness is doing it. You know what we mean by holiness? No demon can stand. So you hear me say, sister, look at me. And the demon goes. Brother, look at me. 
What a, you see that it is what is inside my mind. Somebody say hey, this pastor is very anointed. No, 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 no. I'm very wedded. You see, the word is inside. It's not very anointed, though. I can because I can use another means. I can say, please, sister, come here. Yeah, let's all of us let's stretch our hands. Jesus, take this demon out of this sister. We can pray like that. But when holiness is in the place, when I'm sure Christ is inside me, and I say, look at me. This this thing begins to change and you see something different right yes. we are holy yes. and so we are we are partakers we are partners of the heavenly calling say i'm called, I'm called. some people believe that um when we say called then we believe it's only the ministers no we all have a calling pharaoh had a call to stand against moses for this purpose did i raise pharaoh that's what the bible says god said called pharaoh to do that thing god said so that is God. Every Christian has a call. Not all of us will be holding a microphone. In fact, there's administration in your Bible. There's a ministry of helps. Yeah? There's even the one for wealth. It is a whole office. You know, it is classified. You know, it took some time to classify that this office is this one for us. Fine. But I see some things I don't want to talk about now. But when you see them, you know that it's a whole calling. People who God will so carry in finances. Anything they touch will just be bringing finance. For them to propagate his gospel financially, they will push their ministries, they will push lives. People are, this is a whole call. Tell somebody I'm called. I'm called. But this is what I want you to see. Consider the apostle and high priest of our profession. Hallelujah. That word profession is confession. All right, to profess means to confess, which means to say. But this is not just a saying. The word is homologia. And I want to show what it means. I don't have a board here. When you profess, you are saying the same thing. Hello? He's saying that Christ Jesus is our apostle. The one was apostle means to be sent. And then he's a high priest. He's the high priest and an apostle over. What he has said that you say. Remember, in the Gospels, Jesus says that he doesn't say anything his father has not said. Oh. Jesus says that what his father doesn't say, he doesn't say. This is Jesus. He says only what his father says. And he's telling you, when you say what I have said, I'm a high priest over it. I'm an apostle over that, those words. I see to it that it must show. Huh? He's a high priest. He's an apostle over professions. The confession. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know what I want to show you? Let me show you something from John. I want to believe it's chapter 1 verse 14. Ah, I didn't note it. I want to close. But I hope you are learning. Yes, sir. This man build and build. Yes, sir. Let nothing negative. Don't trap your life. With negativity. You prayed about something. The Holy Spirit told you the thing will work. You get there and the thing doesn't look like it's working. Mm. Turn on your salvation. Yeah. Holiness mode. Yes. Christ in you mode. Yes. Are you here? Yes. I want you to read it yourself. I want you to go. Pause. I want you to take it again. Hold on, hold on. So yesterday, I was looking at this scripture. And the Holy Spirit showed me something. Yeah, yesterday. I was saying, I think just within five minutes or something, I don't know what happened. I took my Bible and I <laughs> opened the scripture. I don't even know, you know, I was just holding my phone. I know some people don't know their phone, they are on social media, right? When I held mine, I turned to my Bible. So I was holding this one. And I turned to the Bible. Then I went straight to John chapter 1. I was reading the, the, the verses there till I got to verse 14. The Lord said, Wait. Reverend, let me show you something. It says in the word. Oh, I, and I don't have time. Sad enough. When we meet in April, very soon, I'll be teaching you where words come from. Words, according to the Bible, is spirit. Right? And anyone who has been studying the Bible knows. But if you haven't, don't worry. We'll come and explain to you. Words are spirit. All right? Why are words spirit? Let me help you. God is his word and god is a spirit all right i'll come and show you from scripture god himself is a spirit 
So his word is spirit. All right? The word was made flesh. Gabby, when I talk to my finances, I'm carrying from the spirit, making it flesh. Hallelujah. Are you following? Yeah. This is a mystery you showed me yesterday. Yeah. Very big. When I say what he says, I don't need to now pray and say, Father, if it be your will. His will is his word. For you to say that you are looking for his will. The will is already in your Bible. So why are you not saying, Father, what is your will? What is your will for me? No, 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 no. If it is there, it is for you. Is it? If it's there in the word, it's for you. His will is his word. If he doesn't want it for you, he'll never put it in his word for you. So he put it there for you because that is a possibility with you. Now that it is a possibility with you, your duty is that when you speak the same thing, homologia, when you say the same thing he has said over your life, over the situation, the blessing has already been there. All this was before you were born. Jesus died a long time ago. Rose a long time ago. Ascended a long time ago. He's a high priest. Now, the blessing is already there. How do you activate it? When I say the same thing he has said, then it becomes flesh. Spirit becoming flesh is by words. I find, I find. So what am I saying? It is in the spirit realm. When I speak, it becomes physical. This is what always we taught me yesterday. Don't worry, I'm going to spend some time decoding it later. But imagine this. <laughs> so something is failing around you, but in the spirit realm, it's not supposed to fail. Yeah. Then I say what God has said. I'm doing something. And whatsoever I'm doing, it doesn't seem to work because I don't know anybody in authority. Then I turn to Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I will not lack. I shall not want. It is there resting in the spirit realm for you. You see, it's resting in the spirit realm for you. How do you bring it when you say the same thing? The Lord is my shepherd. When you say the Lord is David's shepherd, I will not want then flesh. It shows on the physical for you. you only limit yourself. What you are not saying is what you are not having. What you are not saying is what you are not having. What you want to have, you must say. You must say. I say you must say. The same thing you have said. I say, I, say, I say our parents knew this. I don't know where you grew up, but today it is missing. Our parents knew this. Our parents rarely did, did they pray without scriptures. I'm telling you. You see people in prayer meeting with their Bible. Then for us, we started acting movies where we were now using the Bible against powers and we were doing this. So we began to lose it, right? Today it's on our tablet. So we are... But they used to carry the thing. And do you know that? They used to carry Bibles to prayer meetings. It's not a teaching service, though. Do you, do you, do you grow up with Christian parents? They used to go to prayer meeting with a Bible. We thought they are going to pray. Not a teaching service where they you say, let's turn to Mark because they didn't have projectors then. Let's turn to Mark this, then you have to. You see everybody flipping. This was not a teaching service. They carried their Bibles. And they went to a prayer meeting. First prayer point to come. They open the Bible. And then they begin to pray with it. You see pastors holding their Bible in prayer meeting. Holding it. Praying with it. Today, we come to a prayer meeting empty handed. No Bible. And then it's not working. Now you are telling us that you believe in Anunnaki and Egyptian gods and what? It's not working for you. Don't say all of us. You see sometimes don't generalize it. Say, it's not working for all of us. No, it's not working for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now he tells us that Jesus is not real and Moses went to an idol. Wait, wait, please. An idol is not called Yahweh. Which juju in this town has divided the sea? Let's come and tell us. Who is walking on water? Eh? Because you see, demons operate in water, I've told you. Demons. Some of them were casted in the sea. It has one meaning in the Bible like that. And I can show you in the Bible many areas. Even when Jesus, legion, he put the demons into the pigs. The pigs went straight to the water. They went home. Okay? And when Jesus shows up, say, ah, he shall tread upon serpents, scorpions, right? So he started working on it instead of doing the other way around. Oh, he didn't divide it. He didn't divide it. He worked on it. <laughs> Do you know that when he walked on water, John and the other disciples, because I've taught you before, 
Because Job has prophesied it. The prophets have said, the Amazon will come to them walking on water. So when they saw him walk on water coming towards them, then they said, ah. So it's not just a rabbi. It's not just a court we are in. So this is actually the Amazon. Because they knew the books. They knew the books. And they said, he's the Amazon. You have not read the whole book. That's why you are telling us that it is not the Amazon. I don't know if my ministers are your faces are looking. Yeah. I know if you are in church. <laughs> I... Tell someone stop struggling. Yeah. Now it's time to build, create. I'm telling you, I said create. Spend this whole month doing so. Create, create and create and create. If I went there, it didn't work. The Lord is my shepherd. If it worked, the Lord is my shepherd. It is the Lord is my shepherd. Till it is physical. The saying comes first. Homologia comes first. The saying comes first. When you say, it comes first. Yeah. If you agree with God, not just in your head, but you agree in words. I say what only my father says. As I say only what my father says. Exodus 23 verse 25. A dear brother was not feeling well. Diagnosed with something. He took a scripture. That's what I want to show you. I want to show you how he came out of it. He believed and said. Exodus 23 verse 25. Look at it. And he shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless thy bread. And thy water. And I will take what? Sickness away from the midst of thee. He carried this. Proclaimed it. The diagnosis was over. Hallelujah. It happened for a brother. It's happening for somebody. You understand? Yes. We are standing on precious words. We are standing on precious testimonies. Let the Bible mean something to you. Yeah, I forgot these people say it's nothing. After all, it's not revealed to them. It's not everybody who is going. To those of us who it is revealed to, we know what we have gained. When we serve the Lord, He blesses our bread. He blesses our water. Yes. And it takes sickness. You know, when you don't accept this one, it doesn't work for you. But when we homologia with it, and, and the John 1 14 is happening, where and the word became flesh. Maybe in your life, sickness is showing everywhere. Maybe in your life, your bread, your, 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 your food is not blessed. You struggle to eat, you struggle to drink water. Oh! When you carry scripture like this and you are saying the same thing. You are saying the same thing. You are saying the same thing that God has said. I want to believe this is Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. They should show me that scripture. At least I can go through that. I mean, today I'm closing very early. Can you imagine? Ah, probably I will show you something. I won't close with that early, please. If I can say that, Apostle... This is the time it closes. I want you to know the time I actually close. <laughs> Aye. Do you have it? Look at it. Let your way of life, that's the meaning, conversation, not chat. Let your way of life be without covetousness. Don't covet what somebody has because you say, Papa is big. I don't have to be jealous of what somebody got. Papa is big enough. If somebody got, you see, somebody went to Jacob. Sample went to Isaac. Ah, you got the best part. We are taking it from you. He allowed him to take, right? Yes. By the time he went to dig, he still saw water. Yes. Is that not it? Yes. He digs away, they come for it. He digs away. Don't be jealous. Sometimes, you see, people take some things away from us and we are worried. Don't be worried. Let them take it away. Papa is too big. Ah. My father is too big. big. Ah. The Bible calls him the great, the mighty rested one. He's the feeder of nations. Ah. My father is big. My, uh, 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 some siblings are struggling with you over property and they seem to be struggling. Let them keep it. It's just a matter of time. My father is too. Amen. Are you here? Yes, sir. Let your way of life be without jealousy, covetousness. Somebody got children for you. Don't be jealous. Somebody gave birth. You didn't have a child for a long time. Don't be jealous. You see why we are always satisfied with the Bible? We are. It doesn't matter what they are saying. What do I find in the Bible? I don't convert what you have. I don't wish I had your children. You see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My own is my own. My own will come. 
when it will come. How it will come is with my Lord. Amen. My shepherd is wise. Amen. Are we here? Then he said, be content with such things as you have. Listen. He said, be content, be satisfied with what you have. The word of God, the greater one lives in you. It's bigger than anything you want. Because the greater one guesses them. You are carrying what will bring everything to you. That's why I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied, I'm satisfied with Christ. Because anything I want, I get. Are we here? Look at it. What has he said? He's quoting a scripture for you. I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Someone said, I made a mistake this morning, so the Lord is gone. He never leaves. He's telling you. Our Father never leaves. You may leave him. He never leaves. He has assured you. So don't say, Lord, I don't feel your presence again. He's there. He's not a feeling. His spirit is bigger than a feeling. Why are you making God into a feeling? Goosebumps? No, 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 no. He's bigger than a feeling. What he wants you to believe is there, and that's why he's there. No forsake thee. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll never turn my back at, to you. Say, hey, Father, the Father has turned his back to me. He, uh, Lord, you are forsaking me. The only one who was forsook for you is Christ on the cross. Eloi, Eloi. Uh -huh. That's why I said that one. Why have you forsaken me? You, the forsaking has happened once, never to happen again. Yeah. Are we here? So he never leaves. Because I know he never leaves and he will never forsake me. Homologia, what will I say? Next verse. Next verse. So that, you see, you don't just say it fearfully. You say it because you think people may not believe me. What if I say it doesn't happen? Boldly say. Boldly say. Because he will never leave. The Lord is my helper. And I will not fear what man. You see what he's saying? People are saying, we will open this door to you. You are not married. We will open this. You can't get this. You will never become, you will never amount to anything. We are not allow you to marry our daughter. We won't allow you to marry our son. You will never amount to anything. The Lord is my helper. I'm helped. I'm helped. And we don't say it weakly. We say it boldly. Yeah. Boldly say. Yeah. I will not fear what men, men, man shall do unto me. When you do it, I'm not afraid because I have the Lord on my side. Hallelujah. I'm helped. I'm helped. I'm helped. Hallelujah. This week I carried something to go and preach. I couldn't preach it. Because I had a verse. 3 John chapter 1 verse 2. I wish you would pray it for a long time. Are you hearing me? Yeah, two prayer points. Yeah. I was in Accra. The sermon I had, I made them put in a picture and everything. Sent to the ministers around 2 a.m. before I got there. You know, I didn't sleep throughout the night. And then we drove there. But you see, <laughs> we couldn't enter the sermon. Why? We were here. Amplify, please. I want to show you something. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Oh, I am blessed. I'm blessed. Look at it. Beloved, I pray that in every way you may succeed and prosper and be in good health physically, just as I know you're so prosperous. You know the prayer point I was coming from here? Say everywhere. everywhere. Say everything. everything. Everywhere means it doesn't matter where you put me. I am the one carrying the blessing. So if you carry me like Joseph, you can put me in prison. I'll make it. You carry me, you put me in a pit, I'll make it. You put me in positive, I'll make it. Because I am the thing, not the place. That's the everywhere. Everything is everything. Is it a business? Is it marriage? Is it health? We are prospering everywhere and in everything. This is one of the tools for building this month. This scripture. Eh? I prosper everywhere and in everything. When, imagine speak, speaking like this for the rest of the month. Things will begin to change. Spiritual will become physical. Spiritual will become physical. The thing that looked like was not working will begin to work. Are we here? Everything and everywhere. I'm prospering. I prosper everywhere. I prosper in everything. Yes. The Lord gave me this too. This is our cement. This is our rock. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me give you the second one. Let me give you the second one. Galatians 3 verse 26. ESV. <laughs> you see, when we prosper everywhere and in everything, 
People will want to touch us. People want to put us in danger. People want to fight us. Challenges from people. People don't believe in us. People don't believe in where we are going. They see you and they see this you. They don't see what God has made you. What should you tell yourself? Galatians 3 verse 26. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. Look at it. If you don't believe it, you are not. He said in Christ, we are all sons of God. Because you have Christ, I'm a son of God. But look at the beautiful thing, verse 27. For as many, it doesn't matter, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. I know when you are coming for this service, you put on your shirt and things. Some of us, we are wearing Christ. You see, when I put on Christ, my armor is on. You can't fight me and win. You can't fight me and win. Ah, one day, the Archbishop Basie the also came from a crusade and went to his hotel room in one country. You know, he came alone. In his hotel room, not knowing the people wanted to destroy his ministry. So they sent a well-known prostitute. And the prostitute was hiding in the cabinet. You know, the wardrobe. But he didn't know. He only came in and then went to sleep. In the middle of his sleep, he heard loud noise. Fire, fire, fire. The lady was burning. In the wardrobe. Where I've been soaking. You see? When we put on Christ, they can't fight us. They set a trap. They were trapped by their trap. You, are you getting me? By the time people are telling people you will make it. You are telling them I have this opportunity. They are destroying it for you. You think they are there with you, but they are not. When you put on Christ, they can't win. Listen, we are prospering everywhere and in everything. Because we have put on Christ. I'm wearing Christ. I'm wearing Christ. Every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. I prosper everywhere and in everything. I prosper everywhere and in everything. I prosper everywhere and in everything. Everything I do, everything I do, everywhere I go, I'm wearing Christ. I'm wearing Christ. Prosper everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. been blessed by the message you just heard. Stay blessed.